So I got a video, or not a video, but I got a um, message on Discord sent to me by one of the uh, members on our Discord. He's fairly active on there. And be sure to join the Discord down in the description box below. And, you know, earlier this year, I feel we're at the end of last year, I said that basically and technically if we wait until January, this could be true. Because I believe it was in January when I said it. I'd spoken to a relative friend who said, basically the, the prices in Tacoma are going to increase by 20%. Because at that time, I think it was like, I don't know, 16 or something, 18%. And um, no, it wasn't 18%. It was like 16% or 14%, something like that. And he says that I could see it increasing to 20%. Right? And at that time, we didn't know about all the projects that were coming down the pipeline. And there's still more that are actually going to be hitting the news soon of, of apartment projects in downtown. And so there's a thing that was sent to me by the one of the guys in the Discord. They were talking about how the rental prices in Tacoma are the fastest rent growth among metro cities in the Puget Sound. Not only that, but the entire state. Now, we barely inched out Bellevue. But the reason why the prices here are going up so fast is because I've said before, we have a long way to catch up. It's the same thing in terms of housing prices. Housing prices here are lower, but they start to increase in value much faster than other places because there's a lot of room for them to catch up. And so, and they may never catch up because I mean, again, there are some cities who are just hauling in terms of, of their values. But down here in Tacoma, there's still a bargain. And if you look at the population growth here and some of the things that's going on here, it's due to the fact that there are people who either A, can't afford to live in some of these other places and so they move down here, or B, a lot of people can afford to live there, but they just don't want the whatever's going on in Seattle or whatever the case may be. Uh, they don't like the, the, the policies there. They don't like the, the environment there, whatever. There's a whole long list of reasons why people don't like it. Some people move down here uh, because of the diversity. There's a lot of different reasons. But this news release that was sent to me showed that Tacoma grew by 18.9% in the past 12 months. That is a big, massive increase. They did an interview with a guy who was in Stadium District. He has a two-bedroom, two-bath apartment, and he pays $3,500 a month here in Tacoma. Right? But that's, <laughs> that's a lot. It's a lot of money. Young guy. And so it gives you an idea as to how quick things are changing here. And we're not even close to where they, where we, where we are. It, it's not. So again, that 20%, because really you can count that 19%, that 20% could happen in January in terms of rental prices. The one girl that they interviewed said that her rental price went up once her lease ended. It went up by $100. Right? People are saying they need more affordable housing, but what's the definition of affordable? Because the guy that's making $3,500 or paying $3,500 a month to him, $3,000 might be affordable a month. You see what I'm saying? That whole affordable housing part needs to be more defined, right? I don't know if there's something that the city has that talks about that. Um, it just says that essentially when you have apartments, instead of it being market rate, which is what a lot of this is, that it would be for uh, lower income, right? And so they talk about the, the, the um, basically the, the, some of the poverty rate, if you will. They talk about that. They talk about the average salary of some. And so they try to balance it in there because you have people who are low income and then you have people who are middle income, but they can't really afford this, right? I mean, $3,500, that's Seattle, that's Redmond prices. 
So it goes through here and it talks about uh, the cities that grew the fastest in terms of rent. To, uh, Seattle was at the bottom. Tacoma takes the lead, 18.9%. Bellevue, 18.7%. Bothell, 16.8%. Everett, 16.7%. Redmond, 16.3%. Renton, 16%. Linwood, 15.4%. Issaquah, 13.7%. Kirkland, 13.7%. Kent, 13%. And Seattle, 12%. Kent is not that far away, by the way. And still, Seattle is on a tear, or uh, Tacoma's on a tear. The state average was 14.2%. The national average is 15.1%. We're almost 4%, growing almost 4% faster than the national average. While the rental prices grew, the actual costs of rentals in uh, Tacoma are still cheaper compared to other metro cities. The median monthly price for two-bedroom, two-bath in Tacoma was the lowest. And it has been that way in Tacoma for a long time. What has happened is, is that if you look at, and I have saw pictures of some of the buildings just not that long ago in Tacoma. We're talking like 2010, even, 2009. I think it was called Louison or something like that. There was a building downtown that was just a derelict building and that the city finally tore down. But, and there was all this rumor that it was going to be rebuilt and all this other stuff. And literally, it looked like something from Detroit. The windows are all knocked out. Parts of it falling down right in downtown, right there on Commerce Street. And that building has been knocked out. Not long ago, Tacoma did not look like what it does today. Not long ago. We're talking... We, People talk about 1990s and this, that, and the other and all that. Yeah. But even more recently, Tacoma is still going through this, and you can still find things downtown that look rough. If you look at the brewery district, you can kind of tell right there on brewery blocks, there's a section of their stuff that is old buildings that are just in bad condition, old warehouses. We used to have a warehouse district They've kind of ignored that moniker and they changed it to the brewery district because we've also had that. But a lot of those old warehouses are being torn down to make way for this. And if you look at UWT, that was the, the epicenter of a lot of that warehouse district. That's been re revamped and remodeled. They show what UWT used to look like. It looks way different, way different, way different. A lot of the old housing and different things, all that stuff's been leveled. So Tacoma has always been that city, the grid city, that really no one wanted to really invest in. And then all of a sudden it becomes to where Tacoma or Seattle becomes so expensive so quickly and grew so quickly, 100,000 people in 10 years, the, the, the prices up there skyrocketed. And so instead of saying, you know, it's only a, a little bit more expensive up in Seattle, I'd, I'd rather live there. It becomes where it's so expensive that even if you have a really, really well-paying job, it's a struggle, right? It's a struggle. And people who are wanting to buy a house, they can't. It's a struggle. So they're now saying, well, heck, let's pay attention to Tacoma. It started with houses. It didn't start with apartments. It started with houses. People started buying houses five, six years ago in, in larger numbers. We had a, a different situation down here where mo a lot of houses were for rent. We were a big renter's market. You could find a lot of houses that were for rent. And that changed because there were so many homes that were underwater, meaning that they owed more on them than what the houses were worth that a lot of folks just gave up. If you look at some of the buildings that used to be downtown, people just gave up and said, screw it. There's a lot of buildings that just sat down there and just water was pouring through them. The Luazon is one of them, Elks Temple. The Old City Hall is kind of another one, but that's being revamped. McMinnums took over the other one. There's tons of them throughout UW's campus. Those used to, they've been remodeled. So it created this, this atmosphere that Tacoma is, it does care about its image and its future and its remodeling. If you look at the history of what happened, it was like a layered approach. The past leadership was insanely good. 
because they basically said UWT, the focus was to put a permanent campus downtown. That changed things because they took over a lot of those old derelict buildings and they revamped those instead of them being an eyesore. Then the, the link light rail system, that changed a lot of things because it connected downtown to the Dome District and the whole plan, they knew what the plan was going to be, which was to go through Hilltop and all of that. The, the, the hope was, was that this would spur investment. And so they already had an idea of where they were gonna lay the track because they knew their expansion was gonna go to Hilltop one day. That's why they didn't go down Pack Avenue and they went down Commerce instead. Right? Then you look at the museum campus. They took the old, what's now the, uh, the Washington State Museum, which was an old train terminal, and instead of it sitting there and falling into disrepair, they said, hey, let's turn it into a museum, and you have a whole museum campus that really is the most densest museum campus in all of the entire state. You won't find it anyplace else. All of those things basically made people pay attention. Then if you look at all of the parks that we had, the city just amplified that quite a bit and started adding a whole bunch of parks, green space, because they knew eventually they're not going to be able to have the land to do that. There's still parks in the pipeline that they're hoping to, to build. The funding's not there yet. Some of those are downtown. But the funding's not there yet. So it's a layered approach. All of that stuff's been done. It's just been a waiting game. Then you have all these people coming down here buying houses. You have built businesses from Seattle coming down here because they're like, well, our, a lot of our customers went down there. And this is a pretty fast emerging market. I've been saying that. And I said, eventually, you're going to have a lot of the companies that used to be up in that area come down here. You're starting to see that. A lot of them are from the South South, well, not South South. Well, yeah, I guess you can count it as that. Federal Way in Kent, I believe, they lost two of their headquarters that came down here. Tote Maritime is one of them, and GSA, which is a federal government thing, brought both of their headquarters down here. Both of those headquarters combined adds about close to 500 employees that would be right in downtown. So it's, it's literally working its way up. And so now you have this pent up demand here because of all of these people rushing in, low, low prices, land prices are super low. Now you have developers who go in, not only build new buildings, that's more of a later phenomenon. Prior to that, you had a lot of refurbs, B businesses, companies buying existing mid-rises, remodeling them extensively and jacking the rent prices up. So you may have had a building that was very affordable, but now it's not because they it's cheaper to basically go in, overhaul it, slap on some new paint, change out the uh, carpeting, change out the lobby to make it look really good, and then load the prices up. And that's what they do. And they may turn around and sell them again. You're seeing a lot of that. Uh, cozy development. They built two projects here, two buildings, and they've already sold those off because it's a quick turnaround for them to make more money. So they started off as being affordable. Who knows what's going to happen with the new owners? And so a lot of people are talking about that. Like the, the prices here keep jumping because A, you have new companies that will buy a building and raise the prices. Then you have new developers who are coming from Portland to Seattle to other places, Vietnam. They say, look at these prices. Look how quickly they're able to jump. Why not get into the market? So they come and they build. And they're able to say, okay, let's, let's raise the prices too. Let's build more of a luxury type of thing because it seems like people can afford it. If you have a guy that's paying $3,500 a month, that's not a problem, right? So it shows the monthly price for a two bedroom apartment in Tacoma was the lowest. Redmond was the highest at $2,560. Bellevue, $2,520. Kirkland, $2,400. Bothell, $2,260. Renton, $2,190. Seattle, $2,170. Kent, $1,860. Everett, $1,730. 
Linwood 1710, Tacoma 1680. That's why you're seeing the surge in development down here. The land prices are cheaper than most other places here. The rent prices are getting more and more comparable to what you're seeing with Seattle. And, you know, the guy that's on Discord said that probably by the end of 2022, end of next year, we're going to probably crack that $2,000 mark. If that's the case, it will probably edge out some of these other cities because if you look at the rate that they're growing, we're growing 4% or greater than some of those. So it could be that we start tracking up towards what Seattle has. Again, Seattle will still be more expensive, but for how much longer? Again, see, Seattle is dealing with a lot of other issues. So people are not as interested. If you look at downtown Seattle, for example, which is way overbuilt, it's overbuilt when it cut, and I've said this long ago. The energy should have been spread out more in other places. Obviously, the numbers show that, but they should have put more buildings, residential buildings, towers should have been built in some of these other cities, including Tacoma, as opposed to just some of these one or two locations. Bellevue and Seattle, that's where you see a lot of the towers. However, that's not where a lot of the people are going to. It's just too expensive overall. And so you, you have a situation where if you look at Seattle itself, it's going through a lot of different struggles all at once. So nobody's really wanting to move down there as much as they used to. And then you have the situation where offices are not coming back online as fast as they used to. You have other businesses like REI saying that, yeah, the whole headquarters thing, having one location, I don't know if we want to really do that. You have other companies taking a look at that model to see if that works. Having a couple of different little hubs, maybe that works. Because now we have a situation where people don't have to struggle to get to work. See, imagine if you live down here in Tacoma and your job is up in downtown Seattle. And there's a wreck on I-5. You're late. Period. There's, there's, there's no other way to get there except for going downtown or going through I-5. Then if you look at taking the, the the commuter train, or if you're looking at taking the bus, the bus is going to get caught up in the accident. The commuter train will get you there, but it's a long process. And if you have a snow event, again, same thing. So REI is like, I'd rather be within 10 to 15 minutes drive of where our employees are. Now, they've already done that with putting an office up in Linwood. I believe it's Linwood or Issaquah, one of the two. They're looking at the South Sound. And so, again, if that, a lot of people think it's going to be here in Tacoma. And things like that is why you're seeing us move further and further and further and further up the line. Right? So yeah, I agree. I think that, you know, we're, we're going to see that. It says Tacoma saw a 9.9% increase in population from 2010 to 2019. Right? So a nine, almost a 10% increase. So not only are we, we down here, it's, it's the amenities I mentioned. Not only do we have not a lot of the social ills, we, we're not perfect. Don't get me wrong with that. We're not perfect. Tacoma has a lot of its own issues, right? No question, it does. But we don't have the, the stacked issues that Seattle is trying to overcome. And we're the lowest price. And we're having a lot of attention placed down here because... Because we are the next biggest city between Seattle and Portland, a lot of Portland businesses are trying to test their, their metal in this area by coming to Seattle or coming to Port, uh, blah, coming to Tacoma first. So 
we're getting an invasion from all corners. International, from the north, from Seattle, you know, basically from the east, from everybody else that's moving into this area. And then from the south, from Portland and California, there's a lot of pressure here. So it, it makes great sense when you're looking at it on paper, charging $100 every time you have to renew your lease. It makes great sense to charge $3,500 a month for a two-bedroom, two-bath downtown and stadium. What that does is tell developers, pay attention to these areas because, heck, if they're paying that, not a problem. Right? Makes great sense. But anyhow, tell me what your thoughts are. It's becoming less and less affordable. I said this before, that it's becoming much more difficult, especially when it comes to trying to buy a house. House here is going to be a challenge. That whole thing is going to be something else when we start to look at next spring. But just the apartments, one of the things that used to not be as much of an issue is becoming more of a concern. It's harder to get an apartment now. It used to be up in Seattle, you were on a wait list, not down here. But now that is different. Now you're on a wait list in many places. So it's becoming a much more difficult time for people who are wanting to rent down here. There's still a lot of projects in the pipeline, but the issue is now becoming affordability. Anyhow, be sure to join the Discord down in the description box below. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, and comment. Until next time, I will see you. Take care.